What's going on you guys and welcome back to the MCE tutorial series. Here in today's video we're going to be going over how to set up an automatic farm. So this automatic farm that we're setting up here can grow anything. It could be mystical agriculture seeds, it could be wheat, it could be any crop of your choice that you want to grow. You can grow it on here and it will be fully automated. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Now what we're going to do is clear out a 7x7 seven seven area. With that cleared out, we're gonna fill this in with fertilized dirt. So fertilized dirt is a block added by random things. And what this is going to do is make your crops grow three times faster, as well as it doesn't need a water source and it cannot be broken by jumping on it. So that's all very, very nice. Sometimes in your world, if you don't have these crops um, fenced in, you know, mobs can get a hold of them and jump on them and ruin your time, ruin your fun. So with this, uh, you're still gonna need to take a hoe to it, but these are so much better than just vanilla dirt. Now that we have our plot of farmland set up, we're gonna go ahead and dig out a two deep and three wide hole here. Take yourself an aqueous accumulator, place it like so. We're gonna grab a water bucket. You're gonna need two of these because you put water like that and what that's going to do is give us an infinite water source for pretty cheap early on in the game. Next, we're going to want to utilize some fluid ducts. Okay, so that's not how that works. Fluid ducts, like so. We go up to. We want a wooden water tank. We could just type water and uh, wooden water tank here. Pop that sucker up on the top. We're going to need some irrigation channels. Wooden irrigation channel works just fine. And we're going to pull that off. One, two, three, four. And lastly, we want a sprinkler. And what this is going to do... Okay. So, will cause serious FPS lag if particles are not disabled in AgriCraft's config. So, you can go into the config and... Uh, disable the particles. I have mine turned up because my PC is super juicer, but uh, if you have issues with particle lag, then disable that. <laughs> but what this basically is going to do is fertilize our crops even a little bit more than just the fertilized dirt. So now that we have that bad boy set up, let's go ahead and get ourselves some crop sticks. Crop sticks are very useful in almost every situation. Uh, you can accidentally make a double one like that. You only want singles, so we'll fill this all the, all the way in. Very nice, very nice. So, uh, to give you a bit of an explanation on why the crop sticks are so nice, uh, if we take, let's say, some mystical agriculture seeds, right? Let's say you want to grow coal so you can make a infinite coal generator. We'll have a video linked on that down below. Um, the crop sticks will basically duplicate our mystical agriculture seeds so to speed things up let's get a creative watering can and as these crops grow it will spread to other crop sticks and there you go and that's very nice because these seeds are a little bit of a pain to craft uh, you're not going to want to have to craft a whole plot full that is for sure i'll just show you the recipe really quick so yeah very convoluted you have to go through a bunch of steps just to craft these seeds you have to make your inferium into burdentium and the higher up in the tier of seeds you go the longer it's going to take so having these crop sticks to duplicate your mystical agriculture seeds is very nice very nice indeed but for the sake of the tutorial we're just going to go ahead and fill the rest of this in with wheat so our crops have fully grown they are ready to be harvested and we need someone or something to do that harvesting so this is where the automation comes into play. What we're going to do is take a plant gather from industrial foregoing and we're going to pop that sucker right here. And anytime you're using an industrial foregoing machine, it is a great idea to pop on the working area. As you can see, this right now will only harvest this sad little coal uh, and all the other ones are going to be left out. So you can make use of a range add on. A plus three is going to work a seven by seven area like so. And you can expand these um, as large as you would like. A plant gatherer 
and go up to you know what i don't know i can't actually give you that information but i always use the 7x7s so they work well enough for me and it works well with the 7x7 area that the sprinkler irrigates now to finish setting up this machine we're going to need to input power and as it um as it works it's going to create fluid sludge so we don't want to have fluid sludge clogging up our machine so we're going to need to send that somewhere so really quick let's uh set up a power grid for this i'm just using a creative capacitor bank but you should have some sort of energy set up already um so now we're giving it power and it's going to start collecting wheat and collecting or creating fluid sludge so we need to get rid of that sludge we can go ahead and put some ender conduits down and have that going into a fluid trash can. Here we go. When we pop that sucker down, you're going to want to set these up. So this is insert, always active. And then make sure you've got the fluid extract, always active. Now we should start seeing that fludge go, a sludge go away. Now with those two set up, we need to actually have somewhere to send our items. So we can go ahead and hide our working area. We can see that it's working well. And as you can see, I've set all this up underground because it just looks a lot nicer. You can hide all of that and all that is going to be visible is our plant gatherer itself. So as far as items go, I will usually pop this uh, ender conduit right there, extract, and we don't have it active yet. Um, you can wirelessly send stuff using like ender storage chests the ender chest and these will wirelessly kind of transmit stuff around the world so let's say you have this farm set up somewhere away from your base you want that to insert and then you can have this over here and let's say this is your base you would want this one set to extract and then you can have like a storage crate for wheat itself. So let's just grab one of these. And these can get a little hairy. You might want to make use of auto filters because as you can see, I've already got some set up somewhere in the world. It's got rotten flesh and grave dust in it. So uh, for this one, let's just say we want it to be insert. It's not always active. Grab an item filter. Boom. And then let's grab ourselves wheat and coal essence since that's what we're farming over there and if we tag this we put a basic item filter for the insert it will only ever insert the wheat and coal essence from our farm so now we can set this up to extract always active insert always active and let's head back to our farm extract always active insert always active and now you should see that it is sending that stuff and it is bugging out uh, what's going on here so it's gonna kind of tweak out on you while it's uh, transferring it's transferring them in between both of these chests but eventually trust that it is going to fill up your storage container wherever you have it in the world and uh, you can set these farms up duplicate them I have a couple double ones set up over here for the use of our power generation system but the uh, first tutorial i made on this i decided to take down that video because it was not optimal it was not the most optimal setup so yeah if you set your farm up like so it will grow faster it will be more efficient and it will be able to wirelessly transfer your stuff around the globe very nice very nice indeed so hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you learned something new if you did be sure to hit that like button be sure to comment down below what you would like to see next and subscribe so you don't miss any of our tutorial videos. Hope you have a great rest of y'all's day and peace.